Hey everybody, Ryan Carter here. Um, I want to start by saying um, obviously. And then after that, I want to, uh, I'm not sure how to put this. I guess I like to do code tutorials. I like to work through things um, and learn what I'm doing as I go. Um, I like to go through other people's tutorials and try to see if I can get to the end of it, see if it works, see how well it works. And usually I'm in the process of building something useful. All right, let's see, put the camera down here. So I like to build stuff with code, um, but I like to see if those tutorials make sense and they work, and then I can build something real with them. Uh, or I like to, you know, get as far as I can and then either contact the author or I try to finish them myself and figure out how to do them. So um, I'm not sure what's up in my throat. I'm a little bit scratchy today, but <clears throat> I figured I would, um, you know, have some fun, try to build something in code. And, uh, if you want to come along with me, why not? Right. So, um, let's see lately I've been, uh, looking for an alternative to maybe, uh, some sort of CMS uh, alternative to WordPress because WordPress is kind of big and clunky and old, um, and just hard to use a lot of times. So WordPress is really powerful. I've done a lot of websites in it over the years. Um, and it's very, it's hit or miss. So the host that you're using can make it worse um, or better. And uh, WordPress just kind of seems like it's too much to deal with a lot of times. And like I've been a coder for a long time, so I almost would rather hand code something or work on something directly and get my hands a little more dirty than letting WordPress handle everything for me. WordPress is more of a consumer product um, that lets business people who can, you know, click a mouse do things you can't do um, with other products unless you know code. So WordPress is kind of one of the best no code solutions that there is, but being that I'm a coder, I'd rather use a little code to build something. So Anyway, um, I'm a big fan of Vue. I've been uh, using Vue a lot lately. So I thought maybe we would go to uh, this thing, ViewPress. It's kind of like WordPress in that it's a CMS, but also it's a static site generator. So that's kind of the big uh, woo with all the cool kids these days is static site generator. So um, I saw it'd be cool to see if I could build something with ViewPress, um, just build a website, uh, maybe a blog that I'm thinking about writing. Um, and, and it has markdown, you can see here as well, if you can see my mouse. Uh, so I thought that'd be cool. Anyway, I thought we would just start off with that and uh, try to code something in ViewPress and see what it does and see what it makes us do. I, I don't know much about it, but I thought it'd be fun to try. So, okay, so if we click on get started, uh, introduction, I'm not gonna read everything. I'm just gonna kind of skim and go through because us programmers don't read anything anyway, right? Um, that's why we don't need to write docs because we don't need to read it and nobody else does either. Um, so basically ViewPress um, is a static site generator with view powered theming and plugin API, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. It has its own pre-rendered static HTML. That's good. Uh, SEO friendly. That's really good. Um, view turns it into an SPA, single page application, if you're wondering right there. Um, Okay, and view router and webpack, good stuff. Um, let's see here. It's a lot like Gatsby. So Gatsby's pretty good. Uh, I've done some sites in Gatsby. Uh, I don't like the way they do React in Gatsby. The theming and the styles are just kind of weird. I just, I've not ever been a fan of how React does that. And it's not really Gatsby's fault, it's Ra React um, and how they theme things. But uh, I like Vue a bit better. So I thought, hey, you know, let's try Vue. So let's see here. What do we got? We have built-in markdown extensions. Okay, basically markdown. I've looked at some of this already. Default theme, all kinds of other stuff. All right, cool. So they give you reasons why you shouldn't use these other things or why you should. Let's get started here. Okay, so let's see. The first thing is you have to have Node.js 8.6 or above. That's probably not a problem for pretty much everybody. Um, if you have trouble setting up Node and you want to do this tutorial, let me know. Um, I can always help you set up node if that's an issue for you. So um, I might do a whole video on it. We'll see. Um, so fastest way to get your view project started. 
is to use the create view press startup setup generator thingy. All right, cool. So I'm going to open a terminal here. And you can't see that because the terminal is not in my OBS. So I wish I could just share a screen with OBS. Let me see. I don't think it'll let me do a full screen. It just does like a window or how do I, how do we do that? Oh, display capture. That's what I want. There we go. Okay. Let's call this monitor, monitor two. Okay. And then, yeah, that's what we want right there. Capture cursor done. Okay. So we don't need to capture Chrome anymore. Oh, Remlov. Okay. And I know I disappeared. There we go. There I am. Hi. Hi, everybody. Okay. Uh, so we have this whole thing now. So you can see what I'm doing. And I'll try to punch up the size so you can see what's happening. You see if it lets me do this. No, it doesn't. Because why would that be helpful for anybody? Um, let's use the terminal in VS Code because I know you can make that bigger. I'll bring that over here for a second. Oh, hey, look at that. Now we can see what we're doing. It's amazing. Okay. So I'm in my documents projects code. Not the best folder, but it's what I'm working with right now. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say yarn create view press and then directory name. Gotcha. Okay, so go back here. So we'll do yarn. Let's make sure we have yarn installed. We do. We do have yarn installed. Very nice. Okay. So yarn create view press uh let's see what do we want to call this we'll call this copy paste pray um and I, I like to do like dash view at the end so i know what it what it, what it is all right so i'm going to make this a little bit smaller and then it's going to install stuff for us so yarn is a package manager just like npm for node uh yarn also works for node uh if you haven't heard of that before yarns um, you know, almost the same thing as NPM, it seems like. I'm sure there's some ad advantages that I just don't care to remember. Uh, but Yarn's yarn's cool, you know. I've used it some. I haven't used that a ton yet. I'm kind of using it more, seeing what it's doing, and sort of slowly, iteratively, like, getting it into my brain what I should use and why. So we'll see. So anyway, this is going to install. Um, I might cut to when this is done because it takes a while, a couple minutes at least. Oh, except it's done. Okay, never mind. I'm not cutting. I'm just still here. So um, do we want to create docs? Do we want to create a blog? I want to create a blog. That's the whole point of this. So I'll select blog. What's the name of your project? We already named it because we told it the folder name. I'm just going to name it that. And so that default is there. If you just hit enter, it uses what's already in the parentheses. It's just like the default value. What's the description of your project? a blog if I can spell it right my keyboard's not in the right place because I got a mic in front of it okay what's your email I'm gonna put my copy paste pray.com okay what's your name Ryan there you go what's the repo of your project I don't have one yet cool okay so if you're wondering what this does this creates all these files okay so uh, copy paste pray view that's our main folder and then it creates package.json which is pretty standard for npm projects and then git ignore is really important um, that tells git what not to pay attention to so if you have configuration files or secrets in a file you don't want that in git so people can snatch them from you so git ignore is important um, and then we also have it looks like a bunch of posts in this posts folder so it's blog posts and then stuff and they're all markdown files, which is good because I love markdown. It's great. It's pretty easy to write and makes formatting easy. Um, so blog posts. And then we also have blog.viewpress, which I assume is like the viewpress code. So yeah, components, config, enhance app, styles, all that stuff. That's all part of viewpress itself. And then readme. So copy the clipboard. You should use control V. What does that mean? Okay, so if I control V, what happens? Oh, all right. 
it copies the change directory command so we can just go into the directory very cool okay i thought it was like copying that whole list and i'm like what am i going to do with the whole list i don't need the list of files you just showed me okay never mind it's smarter than me it's smarter than the average bear average bear right here so um you know view very smart me sometimes i don't know okay so we have that um now i would imagine if we go look at our folders we can open folder i'm gonna go to our folder we just found select so this is gonna open a new um, vs code window for us so we have blog we have posts and we have viewpress and then we have this stuff so here this is the package file you're probably familiar with that if you're watching this but anyway we have a dev blog and build blog for the production version and repository whatever slash okay all this stuff cool so now uh if you press dev blog we could probably start our dev blog with that but let's go back to the web page again and look and it says or see npx you can also use npx which is basically npm with an x uh let's see you'll be prompted if you draw border plate blah, 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 blah. okay cool manual setup and it blah, 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 blah. we don't have to do all that because we just did that sweet okay directory structure we kind of just looked at this a little so in view press let's go back and look it's easier just to look view press we have components we have foo always a classic bar demo component other component we have a styles directory and config which is all the config information i hope that's big enough for you to see enhance app okay not really sure what i care about there yet but we'll see and then get ignore it, it ignores node modules it ignores all these things that you may not need uh, in your code if you want to push it up to git so that's our directory structure yay cool we can skip this page no we should probably look at this page a little bit and see what it is and just know that it's here in case we need it later uh, so let's see docs view press global config components static resources yep components this is our components directory it's, it's the same with you know react or angular any of those components are kind of the same thing it's just a, a modular piece of code that you can use for a home page or use for a drop down or whatever you can put whatever you want in there uh we'll get into that more later theme styles okay so this is what is dot styl i don't think i've yeah Oh, stylus. Okay. Okay, I've used stylus a little bit. I just haven't used it in a while. And I don't think I've used the actual dot .styls. So that is cool. And there's some other files here. Okay, I don't care about this too much yet. Uh, let's see what's config. If you press config.js, okay. Let's go see that one. All right, so this is a lot of stuff in it. So this is the title, the description, um, some themes if you want to put an automatic theme in there if you're not going to theme it yourself. Um, theme config, so that's all the theme stuff. Footer, this is kind of kind of some like meta information that it'll insert in the website when you're done with it. So it's kind of just setting up the blog. They're always All of them are exported as part of uh, javascript npm kind of style here so that's good all right so there's a bunch of stuff can theme config see this is really helpful information but when you want to get started this is kind of just in your way asset handling it's good to know but like you can start coding and then kind of learn some of this later so relative urls okay Markdown extensions. All right. Front matter. Okay, so this is really important. Um, this is what you really want to know right here. So if we go to posts, and then we look at our list of posts here on the side. I hope you can see that in the video. It looks okay to me from here, but 
Um, so we have front matter and view press. We have writing a view press theme. Okay, so there's a bunch of this stuff, right? So why don't, here's what we should do. Why don't we do this? Um, let's open up a different terminal. I know it's harder to see. I don't think I can make this bigger. Maybe we should open up another terminal window and see if it'll split off. All right, well, this is really cramped, but we can we can look at it later. There we go. Okay, so we're in our folder and we can get a list of what's in our folder, right? So we have blog folder and other stuff. So what we should probably do here is view press, uh, what was it, dev, package.json has the scripts. Dev blog, okay. So let's say dev blog, the term view press. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna say yarn start and see if it finds it. Nope, doesn't find it. So yarn view press dev. All right, so why is it saying view press here? So scripts, dev. So that should, uh, I wonder if we didn't install ViewPress globally. Hold on, did it say to do that? Let's go back here. Getting started. Yarn create ViewPress, okay. See, this is why you should read things and not just skip ahead like I did, because it tells you what to do. <laughs> Serve the documentation. So yarn docs dev. So let's try, since we're not doing docs, we're doing blog. This will be yarn blog dev. Okay. Uh, So wait, yarn, just yarn dev? No. See, view press is not recognized as an internal or external command. So here's what we do. Part one, we go Google it. Why does it say this? And then we'll find out, look at some stuff that we see. So, okay, so we have to have the, the view CLI installed, the command line interface. So we'll go npm install C global view CLI, that's what I was saying, we don't have it installed globally. So now if we get NPM to install it globally, and if we have the right version of Node installed, which we should, um, this should work. And of course it didn't. Okay, so what is the problem? Um, okay, so let's just see, npm-v, and then what we should do node v as well. So we have node 14, so we should be fine. It's, it's like eight, uh, six and greater. Uh, so what happened exactly here? Let's see, come on. Okay, this mouse is really weird sometimes. Okay, so file already exists. Remove the file or run npm with force to overwrite the files directly, okay. So, what else did it say? So it said install view. So let's try installing view. Um, I think we should have view installed from that. Okay, so view is installed now. Let's just try the other steps and see that. And so webpack test. So, okay, let's make sure view is working. So let's just type in view. And usually if you, so if that comes up, if you see view and you type in view and it comes up with, hey, here's all the commands, that basically means you ran view and didn't write any commands and we need extra information, not just run view. Like it was like, you were too basic, let's put some more info in there. So if you do view, then you need to put in like V and that's an unknown option. But up here, if you look, it oh, you have to do capital V. Okay, well, okay, well, Capital V there, now you get view CLI 431. So now we should try this again, try doing the yarn view press dev blog. 
Command view press not found. So what's the issue here? Okay. Fixing NPM path in Windows 8. Okay, so this is Windows, which makes everything harder. Uh, I'd rather uh, program on a Mac, but sometimes Windows is what you got. So let's go here and see what we got. Okay, so you need to add program files, Node.js. But see, we don't know where ours is. So let's do... Um, Let's try this. So let's go here and go which NPM. No, that doesn't work because that's a Unix command. Um, all right, so let's see if we can tell um, where is NPM installed on Windows. Okay, NPM folders app data npm so let's go look on the hard drive and see app data program data so the app data is using users username and then app data then what roaming npm cache hold on let's try local nvs okay so i have nvs so NVS is, is sort of like NVM. It's a node manager of, it manages different versions of NPM and node that you can install back and forth. Um, so select a version. Okay, so let's try N NPM. NPM's there. NPM is located here. Okay. So that's not the issue. It seems like NPM is okay. We just got to figure out why ViewPress won't work or how we're supposed to run this. NPM run docs develop. Okay. But hold on, is this called docs? Make a dirt docs. Okay. So that's the problem too, is it, the name of the folder is docs. So that's what we're supposed to run. So let's go here. Let's try running yarn run dev copy paste pray view, which is an insanely long thing to run. View press. ViewPress is not recognized as an internal. Okay. ViewPress requires. Okay. So we did that. And so it's putting ViewPress on here. We might have to go with the manual startup. Um, add D. Okay. So this is to install ViewPress locally. Okay. That didn't look like we needed to do that. But let's try that. All right, this is probably what will install it. It's just that they didn't say that at all. It just said that in the manual setup. So the automatic setup is supposed to take care of it. But sometimes you get the manual setup is what you need to do. But it's hard to tell when. So maybe installing ViewPress locally this way will give us like the CLI we expect and everything. And then we can go on from there. This is why development is hard because there's always something that they didn't mention or something that you have to figure out and it's not it's not easy so if it was like hey push button go and everything worked then dev would be way 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 bigger and a lot more people would do it but this is just not <laughs> it's not easy okay so now let's see uh if we do exactly what they're saying let's go double check what they were saying because i don't even remember now <laughs> Okay, so it says, uh, not there, here, and package dot. 
Okay, so we have scripts. We have dev, which is viewpress dev blog. So we can use yarn to run that, or we can use viewpress. So let's see if viewpress is actually installed. Okay. We just saw it installed though. View CLI, all this stuff. It's a lot of stuff for nothing too, but um, yarn dev, yarn run viewpress dev blog. That works and it doesn't work the other, all right. Okay, so apparently that's what's happening. So now it's building it and this is running and our window is going bananas. Like, what is this here? Whatever, man. I don't know. All right, so we at least we have it running now. And then we'll kind of put that over in the corner. Uh, let's see. Maybe I should leave that bigger so we can see what's happening. Uh, let's see. Can we um, get rid of the terminal? Yeah, we can just size it over. Okay, that's fine. It's still running. It's still over there, but we'll, we'll be able to see what we're doing in the code here. Um, so now if we go open a browser... We can run localhost 8080, and we should see our basic ViewPress blog. Okay, so this is on our local machine. This looks like a web page, but it's local. It's on our local machine right there. So um, this is on our computer, not on the internet. So now what we should do is uh, go back to here, which is the instructions, and go to... Where were we? Okay, so we have it installed, it looks like. Um, and they're doing a bunch of stuff. They're teaching how to use Markdown, using View and Markdown. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I don't know how much of this we need. Uh, we can probably figure it out from here. So we don't need a package JSON anymore. What we do need to know is all of these things. So let's look at this one. We have 11.7, um, 7, 2018, Front Matter and ViewPress. So let's go to our actual site that's local. Um, I keep saying that because it looks so much like a web page that you don't really want to have this anywhere because it's hard to tell what it is. Where? Okay, so writing a ViewPress theme number four. So these are all different posts. This is confusing. So this is a post here. It's the most recent one. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Instead of the older one, let's go to the most recent one. So let's see, 2019, five, six. And probably the first one here is gonna be the first one. Writing a ViewPress theme. Okay, so let's go here. Writing a ViewPress theme. So if you look at the URL down in the corner there, I don't know if you can see that, it's right here. When I mouse over this. It says localhost 8080, um, 2019-0506, writing a ViewPress theme 2. So that's what this post is from here down to the next link here. So this whole thing is in that one file. So let's go look at that file. So what we have here is, I don't know that I meant to do that, but okay. Um, this is what's called front matter right here. And this is a markdown convention that basically means this is the metadata or the information about the post that's kind of behind the scenes that will help us create an, a better experience. It's not really part of the content. So inside there, we have date and the date has to be formatted this way. Uh, you can usually change that somehow, but that's the default. Um, and then tags. So these are all tags, view, press, blog, and theme, and you list them like this. That's a, like a bulleted list. Um, and then author is whoever wrote this. And then location is Shanghai. Now here, um, I don't know if you know Markdown very well, but this is the uh, basically H1. So the one, okay, whoops. This is um, the title with one ampersand or one hashtag, as the kids are calling it. This is the title of the whole thing. And then this would be your first paragraph. And then in here, inside these three back ticks, those things, that's the one 
on the very top corner of your keyboard right underneath escape that's where tilde is that little like 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 squiggle that's like half of infinity kind of um and then that's the back tick that's up there um that's how you get these back tick things here so three of those up here and three of those below with a space line on either end um, creates um, basically a code block in mark in markdown so over here that's what this is so this is a code block i really like that because i i do want to write code in this blog so that's already in there which is fantastic um, kind of a lucky break for me but i don't know if everybody will use that so this is your next paragraph and then this is like an h2 so the more uh, hashtags you put in front and then a space, that will be the second header. So let's go look at that. So like this is the H1 and it has that there. This is an H2. This is just a link thing on the side. That's not related really. So this is an H2 and then this has content in the middle here. I can't really read that very well. It's really small. There we go. Let's see if that's easier to see on the video. Okay, so this is the link, the top of the post link this is the actual h1 in fact that's probably what it amounts to if we go look at it in inspector yeah h1 and then this is equivalent to an h2 if we inspect that it'll jump down to here if you see this h2 here that's an h2 tag and these these things between are paragraphs that, that's what you'd expect in just about every blog system there is that's a paragraph so um if you don't know what I just did, I right clicked and went to inspect or control shift I, and that brings up the inspector over here. And when you mouse over, it, it will highlight what you're on. So you can tell what code relates to what output on the side. If you've never seen that before, that's what that is. So then we have, you know, another paragraph. We have another code block and this is nice because it has HTML in the corner. So we know what kind of code it is. It's cool. Um, and then we have directory structure. It's talking about all the stuff in view. What is this? This seems like it didn't format correctly. Hold on, let's go look for view theme. That looks like it didn't work right. It's supposed to look like this, so it's easy to see. But for some reason, those three things so I'm going to put three back ticks and go to the next line. And then I'm going to put three back ticks at the end of this. I don't know if that's what they intended, but let's save this. And then if we go back to the page and we refresh the page, it didn't change it. Uh, so I don't know if we need to reload it somehow. Uh, did I close the terminal or how did I? Split editor, write more actions. Show opened editors. Uh, I don't know, maybe I closed it. Seems like it's still there, but. Uh, yeah, one node, there we go, there it is. Okay, so success, build, finish. So maybe we, we just hadn't finished it yet. So if we reload, that's still not reloaded. So let's try going to inspect and then going to empty cache and hard reload because that a lot of times will wipe out any formatting that's there. So this is still not, it's not listening to us when we change it. Um, oh, that's the, okay, that's why. You see why? That's why it didn't change it because this, we changed the one. So just theme with nothing on it. Two is the one we're actually looking at, but it's very similar. So the code is very, very the same. Um, so if we change the right post, okay, why does it do that? I don't like how this editor does that. If we change the right thing, it'll rebuild itself. Uh, terminal. Keep opening shells, but that's fine. So it rebuilds itself. And we can go here again and we can look at that first deal, which should be two. It should be theme two, yeah. Um, so I don't know why it's not updating. Why view theme is weird and it won't update. 
Because that's the one we're looking at, too. That's the one. Um, I mean, it looks like we changed it, but let's try this again. Because it has to reload everything. I feel like it should be hot swappable and it should be reloading, but sometimes Windows doesn't listen, so I'm not sure what the issue is here. Empty cache. Let's see down here. See, there we go. This is what we were trying to get it to update to. I don't know why it wouldn't update. So that's already uh, a good sign that it doesn't update when you want it to. Um, but anyway, so that's how you do that. We just changed that from being those triple dots. I'm not sure what that was for to being the three back ticks, which is what view actually does. Um, can we separate this? Like pop this out at all? Minimize panel size. Okay, that's another reason to use an external shell, but um, then we can't do things like see it. All right, did we die? What happened? All right, it looks like uh, maybe VS Code just ate it. I'm not sure what happened there. So this is going well already. Um, man, Windows sometimes and its underpinnings are just not even fun. Okay, so, oh, it was updating. That's why it updated and didn't want to live anymore. Why? I don't know. Okay, so we can also run it from here. So let's go here. Um, I will go to my projects folder. That's not how that works. There we go. So I've got an auto key hot script set up for that. If you want to know more about that, let me know. Um, I'll explain it more later if you want to see what that's about. Anyway, go to our folder. CD. Oh, I got to hit enter. That's why. CD copy paste preview. There we go. So LS, that's, a, that's our list of stuff. So anyway, in here, because we install, installed yarn it should be able to run it so this is the same stuff that it was doing before um it's automatically clearing that on purpose okay so it's doing the same things that our terminal was doing before but it's just a lot less visible because you can't see it uh i wonder if i could punch this up settings let's see if we can font size this bigger heck yeah yeah oh oh that's what i like it looks good um except now you can't see it. Okay, save settings. We'll just make that a lot bigger so maybe now you can see it. Okay, let's cancel that. Close one console, yep. All right, so now we save that and it's gonna be, there we go, it's a lot bigger. So now if I do CDP, that takes me there and then I can do CD copy paste, spray. there we go. And then I think you can see that a lot better on the video even though it's still a little small, it's um, a lot better. Okay, so now it's building again. I know you can't see because of my wonderful faces in the way. Um, okay, so it built. That's good. We'll leave that on that side and we'll just load up our code in the whole window. And then we'll go back to that when we need to see what happened, but it'll refresh. So uh, now what we did is we have this. We just made a little change to that so we can see what's going on there. So this is roughly what we do. Um, the, the blog is kind of built. We don't have to do a lot to it. Uh, we just put posts inside this posts framework in this folder, and then it'll show up in here. Um, the next thing we probably want to do, so tags is here. Doesn't seem to do much. There's the blog. So what are the first things you might want to do with this? Um, you might want to add more pages up here. So what if we want like an about page? Uh, we could see if there's a way to um, put more components in here. Let's see, this is demo component, other component, foo bar. Okay, so now what we have to figure out is, this is probably where we put pages. Components seems like where we put pages. Uh, but where's like where's the router? What does the router do? So nav, blog, tags. Okay, so this is links to things. Tag. Is it tags? Um, okay, so that's links. But let's see where... Um, enhance app. Why do they call it this? I don't, I don't know. 
config. There's a readme. Okay. A blog development bash yarn dev yarn build. Okay. That makes sense, but it wasn't working before either. We, even if we did the right thing. So, um, so components foobar view press, but it doesn't say it's got to be in that config file. What we do theme config description theme. Okay. So modify blog plugin options. Okay footer contact copyright all right so now it's kind of it's kind of up to what you want to do with this so view press blog example um change the title that's probably the first thing let's go do that so in here if you go to config file it's obvious it's right here i had it open already so it's less you know surprising Ooh. Um, but let's put copy paste and pray there and pratt yeah sure um and then we can say Um, web development. Um, I forget what the slogan I came up with is. Uh, here, that's probably here. Yeah, I know I'm having DNS issues today because Cloudflare went down. Development quick, quick reference. Let's just call it that. Why not? So this is my current blog on WordPress. Um, so development quick reference. So let's refresh, go back to here and reload. And that does nothing. So let's go to inspect because that allows you to empty cache and hard reload. So it doesn't do anything when you do that. Reload due to change, but it's reloading, but it's not reloading weird why does it do that let's um all right so i don't know what it is if it's windows or what but we, we can just stop it and start it up again and then if we wait a second okay there we go copy paste and pray is there and then i think the only place that the uh description shows up is probably in the meta over here. There's a lot of weird style tags in here. Okay. And then uh, title. I don't know where it would have the description if it's in the footer, maybe. I don't know. Let's see if it's down there. Not really. Okay. So a lot of this can be attributed to the theme and what you have to do to it to get it to work. Um. The other thing that's weird is I'm wondering how this works, how you see what's in tags or, or wh what's the router? Like what router does it use? That's the thing. I don't see a routing file or anything. So it's hard to tell what's going on there. Mm, excuse me. Um, so let's see, using components. Okay, you can directly use components using preprocessors. Okay, so what about config reference, base, title, description, head, host, port, temp, Dist, 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 dist. I don't really know which one that is. All right. Uh, looks like they've got a lot of things, but how how do you do routing or pages or whatever? That's kind of what I want to know. Base URL. Okay, that's fine, but how do we do? Um, pages. App level enhancements. Okay.
Acid Healing. Permalinks, maybe that has something to do with it. Okay. Um, before 1.xx, I'm getting my phone out here just to see if I got any messages. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, defines the page links based on file hierarchy. Okay, this is a lot like Nuxt, how Nuxt works. File structure. So, if you have a source folder, then you would have a source URL segment here. So, it says this is not what it does anymore. This does something different. Okay, so okay, so started supporting permalink from one zero zero, and then the actual pages would be source source tags. So it still works that way. It looks like, but you can change what the URLs actually are. Default is slash regular. Okay, so let's try this. Um, we have blog and posts. Okay, so we should put another folder at the same level as blog. So if we put another folder, new folder, let's call this um, about. About's always a good thing to have. Blog is, everything is in blog. Posts, components. So hold on, does that mean that we can do like blog slash foo? No, okay. Slash foo. Um. No, okay. So that's very unclear. Components. Blog is just slash. So nav, that's the links at the top, but how do we put in more links that's the thing how do we make new pages that's not it Huar is my other super suit okay so let's put this maybe in here so permalink exports so permalinks okay 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 this is cool in hello md you can put a permalink on a page only and I'll have a higher priority than global settings. Okay, so cool. Let's try that and see if that's actually true. Let's get rid of this folder. I don't know if that's how you want to do that. So here, um, let's put a new file and let's do, let's call it like about.md and let's copy kind of how the front matter looks and put that in here. So let's copy this. Let's not make it. Uh, so I am guessing that's month day, right? So zero seven. Ah, zero seven. What's today? Seventeen, eighteen. Okay. So tags. I don't care right now. Author, Ryan, location, Denver. But then we can put in permalink and we can say slash about. I think that'll make it a page about us, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's do that. 
And let's see. Let's go back home. Let's see. We probably have to reload it, right? Okay, so let's stop it. Because that seems to be what has to happen every time. That's really annoying developing and it doesn't work with hot swap or Windows or whatever the heck is the problem. Ah, you see, there we go. So adding slash about to the permalink gives you a new page. Okay, so that we made a discovery. That was good. So adding this to your page, even if it's not in the normal, so it's sitting in the blog folder, but it's outside of the posts folder. So you can put other other files here, other pages. Um, so now what we can do is now that we got that done, so that's that's the page we just made. Is now it's slash about, let's see, we can do it without a slash too, right? Yeah, okay, just adds one. So we could put the about page up in the nav here too, and that's actually easier, because we can go to, uh, let's see, is it in view press? Uh, then config, and then down here we can put in, we gotta add a new object, so make sure you add the full object. It should be comma between these brackets, and then another comma so that it's all like one big list with commas between. And then we can put about, and we can add about there. And then I'm assuming we have to reload before it'll actually show up. Okay, so let's see. Hard cache and reload, okay. So I, wait a minute. Can I add property, reduce? It just really doesn't want to work. Okay. Maybe that's fine. Maybe it's a Windows thing. I'm not sure what the issue is. Shouldn't have to reload it every time. That's kind of annoying. So if we go here again and empty cache, hard reload, now we have the about link up there. So something's going on with the hot reloadable capabilities or it's not working right on Windows or what. I'm not sure what it is. But if we go back to blog, then we can go back to about. It's actually very snappy. It loads really, really quickly. Locally, obviously. But um, that looks good. So, yeah, I mean, this this could be a really good thing to use if you want to do something really simple in Vue and you know Vue already. Um, I would also try out like Gatsby and some of those other ones. Um, just Google static site generators and you can find ones in React, Vue, Angular, or whatever framework you're into, um, or whatever framework you find easiest if you're trying them all. Um, but basically, um, ViewPress seems interesting. I'm not really sure why I'm having the issues I'm having. It's probably just Windows. Who knows? Um, I could try it on a Mac too and see if it's a lot easier just because my Windows is very wonky sometimes. I'm not sure why. My NPM set up on Windows especially. So, um, But yeah, you can see just kind of the power of this this system just installing it and playing with it a little bit. Um, you know, I might play with it some more and see what I can come up with. But that's, that's the basics. You put posts in here with the date and mark them so that they're all, uh, or you mark them with the date and with, you know, um, how you want them titled. The title is actually here, but this is how they show up in the site, the actual names of the files. So um, posts in there, you can put pages here. You can customize a lot of stuff and change the theming. I'm sorry if it's really dark, the the window light kind of disappeared on me. It's getting later in the day. Um, let me see if I can turn on this light here. We're almost done anyway, but um, yeah. So anyway, what I wanted to say though was, um, you know, if this is interesting to you, all right, somebody turned my lamp off again, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, if this is really interesting to you and you have uh, specific questions about ViewPress that I can answer for you, please let me know uh, in the comments below or email me or catch me up on Twitter. Uh, hit me up on Twitter and not catch me up. What, what am I from Dr. Phil? Catch me up on Twitter. How about that? No. Um, yeah, just catch me on Twitter. Uh, that's what I meant to say. And let me know if there's any questions about ViewPress. I can dig into it and see if I can figure them out. Um, like, hey, how do you do X? How do you do Y? What do, how do you do it? Um, I'd love to answer questions if I can. If not, I'll see if I can find an answer for you. Um, if you're really interested in using this, let me know if you want me to do more videos on the topic. Um, otherwise, we'll probably move on to another framework or another generator next time and 
try to set something up with that and just see how that goes. So, um, yeah, hopefully the videos will get better as I learn to do them and actually uh, get better at videoing and coding at the same time on camera. So um, let me know what you thought and uh, how I can improve in the comments and I will see what I can do. Uh, anyway, till next time, um, happy coding.